and all of a sudden we have the average size head of homo speakerus. <laughs> This is what the audience thinks of us when our head becomes this large. It's pretty much, yeah, like that. I thought it would be way more dramatic than that. I have the great privilege of traveling all over the world, researching, writing, and speaking about workplaces that rock. And some of the examples I come across are just these tiny little gems, like this children's hospital in London, England, where the window washers dress up as superheroes. You have to be intentional about it. You can't go buy your culture at Costco. Even if you did, it would be too big and you wouldn't know where to put it. Have any of you ever just waved the white flag in the morning? You didn't know, I'm done. <laughs> And so you don't even bother to have a shower anymore, right? You just kind of stagger into your bathroom where you give yourself a wet sponge bath using a few damp pieces of toilet paper. The second part of the equation, of course, when we talk about an inspiring culture, is that we have to talk about our values. And then you get the executive team together and you hold hands and you sing, we are the world. Actions speak louder than words and talk is cheap. Who is gonna disagree with any of your wonderful values? Yeah, teamwork, yeah, not really for me. <laughs> I mean, is there anybody here in this room at any point in your life when you applied for a job, said during the job interview, I want you to know I'm not a team player. <laughs> and we have to stop providing good customer service because good customer service isn't good enough because we all expect good customer service. So all we're doing by providing good customer service is staying out of jail. All we're doing is keeping out of the doghouse unless we exceed those basic expectations and we do something a little different to stand out from the herd to be heard. Now, I don't know if you know this about the call center business, but they have an employee turnover rate in some markets of more than 100%. More than 100%. That means, I think, people are showing up at day one on their jobs, looking in the window and going, I don't think so. <laughs> Yet Beryl, again, by being intentional about their culture, by building a family-friendly, positive, supportive culture, they have reduced their employee turnover rate from an industry norm of 100% to less than 13%. And, oh, by the way, they make five times the profits of all their competitors. The receptionist? was not receptionist. Her job title was actually Director of First Impressions. Now doesn't that put a different framing on your duty there? And everything is communication. But of course, it's not just what we say, it's how we say things that matters. So they see you coming and they think, oh God, no, it's the seagull, because all we become known for is going, ah, 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 you got one wrong, ah, ah, it'll never work. We tried it in 1947. <laughs> I was interviewing this company in Copenhagen, Denmark a few years ago. Phenomenal culture, totally transformed their culture in a matter of six months by focusing relentlessly on their four core values. Every meeting space, they had this huge sign that filled the wall that said, blah, 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 blah. Just do it. Some of you are thinking, oh my God, it's a message from the Pope. <laughs> This is supposed to be a giant light bulb. <laughs> Every single survey I've done in my creativity innovation workshops that I've read over the years, these are the top five places people say they come up with their ideas, their light bulb moments. Showering, driving, sleeping in bed, exercising, sitting on the john in the bathroom. Guess what never shows up on the list? Work. <laughs> Evidently, work is where ideas go to die. <laughs> But I see the same spirit of fun at work in mining companies, in law firms, in hospitals, schools, blue collar, white collar, it doesn't matter. Right here in Winnipeg, Argus Industries, they have an incredibly fun, what they call a tribal culture. The CEO has this wonderful philosophy that I think we need to take to heart. He says, you know, Work is hard enough as it is without making it any harder. Well, you're waiting for the end of the day so you can go home, have a little bit of this, back running, waiting for the weekend, back running, waiting for your holidays, back running. What are some of you waiting for? Death. Who said death? Was this? this was Michael who said death. This, this is not a good sign. 
You know, I, I thought the AGM went pretty well, actually, Michael. I, none of us are going to think, I don't think. Man, I wish I was more of a fun sucker. Man, I wish I worked with more fun suckers and worked in a more fun sucking, soul sucking. But you have to be very careful when you say fun sucker <laughs> this early in the morning. I read hundreds of vision statements over the course of a year. And I gotta tell you, in all honesty, there are maybe two out of every 200 that kind of get my motor running. And if we're talking about an inspiring vision for the future, if you're selling me on your train and where you're headed and you want me to jump aboard your train, then I don't know, I think it's kind of got to be inspiring and it's got to have a sense of fun and a sense of urgency and it's got to be interesting and not, you know, the blah, blah, blah stuff that I see so much of. So instead of a vision statement, how about we create more visionaries? Instead of a vision statement, how about a fun, like one of my association clients did, a fun vision video where they give people a sense of purpose in that video because that is important that we connect people to a sense of purpose. A Mercer report that came out this spring found that the number one thing people said they wanted out of their jobs was a strong sense of purpose, 64%. Anywhere from about four to as many as seven out of 10 people on an executive team don't even understand what the purpose of their team is as many as seven out of 10. Now, I live in the Canadian Rockies. Between Banff and Lake Louise, we have a wolf pack of about 10 wolves. Could you imagine 10 of these wolves running down, and this, yeah, this is how wolves run, by the way. <laughs> running down a moose, working strategically as they have to to haul down a moose, and seven out of 10 of them all of a sudden go, squirrel! <laughs> We're 100% jerk free. And talking to the CEO of this company, he said, you know what's amazing, Mike, is that candidates in job interviews will actually self-screen themselves out of jobs. People will be in the interviews going, you know, I think I'm a bit of a jerk. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna fit in here with your company. Set up a recognition program, a award program to get people thinking in two different scales with their service. And the first one is a go the extra inch award. And the reason I suggest this is first of all, it appeals to all the lazy people on your team. <laughs> they just love, oh yeah, I could do that. Go the extra inch, sure, okay. <laughs> but in addition to that, it sets up that mindset where people are constantly looking for those small things that make a difference. It reminds them that it is the small moments that make a difference and it's the small things that piss us off as customers. So we have to reward the go the extra inch, but we also, of course, have to reward the hit it out of the ballpark. Are we doing truly effective communication or are we just worried about being efficient with our communication? So we have to remind ourselves of the importance of speaking human, that you can grow your sense of humor by practicing looking for the accidentally funny stuff in the world. I spend a lot of time in hotels, very often in the shower caps, they have a label that says, fits one head only. <laughs> when you laugh, you lower your blood pressure, you increase the flow of oxygen going to your brain, and oxygen going to the brain at work, highly recommended. 30 seconds of good hearty laughter, belly laughter, is the same physical workout as about two minutes on a rowing machine. So now you know what I do now that I know this? I just go down to my local gym, and I just laugh at the people working out. <laughs> Rituals and traditions give us something to look forward to, they give us something to reminisce about, so they create that sense of shared history that becomes so important in building a strong, vibrant culture. When we do those fun, heroic, out of the box, wild kind of things, it's incredible for us. It makes our day, it makes our month that much more rewarding and fun and energizing.